long, long time. Since we actually are uh, doing a couple of special things today, thank you very much for joining us um, in our 19th a lot of show face. Singapore Connect session. I think we might need to mute, um, is it Hanlin? Or mute someone? Oh. One more of the Perfect. He might be cooking right now and uh, maybe next time we should invite him to do a session for us and uh, take over from Chef M who is going to teach us to make sambal chili today. But uh, meanwhile, thank you all for joining us for our 19th Singapore Connect uh, COVID-19 for COVID forum. Wow, I stumbled there because I was thinking, is it really 19th again? It is. Oh my gosh. As Mark counted, we have about 19 of these we, sessions we, we, already. We, we actually mistakenly counted forum number three twice. So uh, basically now that's why we skipped number 18. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. So we went from 17 to 19. That's right. But um, the cool part is that I think, you know, we've been on this journey together since the 15th of March before the shelter in place. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and so for today's session, we're going to do a few of the usual things we do, which is give each other a quick update on the wildfire situation in the Bay Area. Quick uh, pre-call um, survey and sentiment check-in. And then we will spend a quick moment to go through for about 20 minutes or so, Chef M's special, uh, special agenda item. She's going to go through um, some Hawker Center stuff. I mean, some of you remember her from the National Day event when she had the first of Dabao Singapore's um, Hawker Center uh, sort of uh, a TV show for us. And so she walked around Singapore Hawker Centers to kind of give us a sense of what's happening out there and just, you know, really make um, our mouths water. Today, she's going to do that again, but this time she's gone up a little bit at us. You know, she's actually gone up and she's going to report from Marina Bay Sands. So this is um, actually a super high called Sky. What is it, uh, M Chef M? Uh, it's called Sky High Hawkers. It's basically like elevated hawker food and how elevated. Yeah, so the food that the hawker people make if they if people are willing to pay like you know about fifteen dollars per plate kind of thing. Oh, you mean like the oh, one we're willing to pay here? <laughs> like how much we actually just pay here? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's all you, you know. know. <laughs> all right. The laksa and is worth it. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's the price we are paying right now. Uh. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. So yeah, she's Stop reminding us of how much more affordable is in Singapore. Hawker food is sky high. Uh, hawker food as well, Marina Bay Sands. And then we are going to have a bittersweet moment or farewell to our Council General, Daryl Lau, who's been with us these past three years. So many thanks you guys for joining us for this very special moment. This is our last session with him. Hopefully we'll still see him around over the years, you know, as he'll keep in touch with us. Um, but indeed, you know, I, I think we want to um, certainly take some time to thank him for, for his, uh, his friendship, his support um, with us through this period. So that's our agenda for today. Certainly the rest of us who are here are concerned about life in shelter in place. Um, the new question that we have this week, and thank you, Daryl, uh, as we move on to the sentiment analysis here, Mark, maybe you can talk a little bit about this new question that we have this time. We've changed it slightly, which, which actually kind of changed the numbers dramatically. As you saw um, from previous weeks, everyone was thinking it's gonna be about 20 weeks more that shelter in place will, will be in place in a sense for us. But um, we changed the question this week and that colored perceptions among all of us here. Somehow on average, we're thinking it's gonna be 77 weeks. Uh, Mark, can you kind of walk us through the question here and the rationale for the change? Yeah, I think when we first asked this question, it was just after shelter in place came out around March 16th. And I think people thought that uh, for shelter in place at that time really meant, I think, what it was, which is stay at home, only go out for essential purposes, which were defined as going to buy food or exercise, uh, but not like go for recreation and certainly not um, dining out because all the restaurants were asked to be closed and many, many businesses and shops were also asked to be closed. As many of you uh, have been experiencing over the couple of months, there has been sort of a gradual reopening probably starting around two months later in May. And some of the shops have been allowed to open and some of the restaurants have you know, outdoor dining, 
and such. Yet shelter in place continues to be, you know, in place. And actually, if you look at LA's webpage, I think it's also called stay home or home. The advice is still always to stay at home. Having said that, the reality on the ground, I think is that we know most people have already gone out of home. I don't think anybody has stayed at home continuously since March. So the question I think that always have come up whenever we were on these conversations with people, we had people say like, oh, when this blows over, let's go and have a meal. When, this, when life is back to normal, this is sort of like the kind of conversation that we've been hearing from people. So kind of changing the milestone of asking this question instead of like, when will officially shelter in place be over? Because it just seems like no one's really actually sheltering in place. Let's ask people, when do you really think if, and we all hope the answer is yes, it's not a matter of if, but when, life will be back to normal. And, and then just put a checkpoint in California. And I think that really changed the mood because I suspect a lot of people are waiting for a vaccine to be widely available before they perceive that life will be back to normal. All this, uh, even Singapore going to stage three is also not acknowledging life is back to normal. It's just a managed uh, reopening of sorts. So, so that was what I think we, I just felt like wanted to frame the question tighter and just get more meaningful feedback because over time it was like kind of harder and harder to make people understand like, well, what does shelter in place really mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I was de I'm definitely still sheltering in place. I don't know about you guys, um, but maybe I'm less of a party you know, person <laughs> than someone out there, but I'm definitely So it's really dramatic, right? You look at the uh, readout and you see that some of the optimism in 26th of April, it went down to less than five weeks. Uh, probably around that time, actually, I think cases were going down. And then somewhere around July, August, as cases were going up, you see they thought that it could be almost uh, a third of a year. But now that we've reframed the question, <laughs> it's really quite dramatic. It's, but I think that's also because we have some outliers, because I think this might be a, either a mean <laughs> of sorts. So we probably had some people estimating like way over 100 weeks, 200 weeks even. Yeah, you know what? Can I ask, just in the chat window here, how many of you kind of felt like it was going to last longer after you heard that uh, President Trump got infected. Did, did his infection make any impact on your feedback to us at all? Can you just say yes or no? The, the fact that President Trump- a poll? Yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a quick poll right now. No, we can't do a poll. Um, yes. no, poll in the participants section. Everyone can press yes or no if you click on right. the participants. Well, I don't have the ability to set up a poll, formal poll per se, at this point. But, but maybe why do you, you think guys about can just type yes or no. If we can figure it out, we can... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you guys just type yes or it's no. Good. I think a lot no, of people are coming a, saying no. It's a function in, in Zoom already. You don't need to set it up. So if everyone just goes to participants, there's a yes and no. If you're host, you cannot see this and you cannot vote, but okay. everyone else should be able to see it. Oh, okay. I think, Mark, you can see it, right? If you go to participants. I think so. There's someone... a green tick for yes, X for red color, button for no. Cool. Look at our social media experts. All right, but guys. Not, yes or no? Did Trump's infection impact your decision? Yes or no? There's no yes or no. There's no yes. <laughs> All right. Maybe we we'll just use the chat window. Can we just say yes or no in the chat window? A lot of people are saying no. Nope. No. Nope. I think that's a good enough sampling. Yeah. Tell us, tell us why. Why is there? Why? Why no? Because we all know that he, he is always wrong. So. <laughs> okay. Because we always know he's wrong. Okay. That's a that's a good uh, sense. See a lot of no's. In fact, it was hundred percent no. My gosh. Um, it was a matter well, of time that study. he would get infected. See that too. Um, well, not taking any precautions. Yes, anybody else? Someone? Nora? Um, I mean, for myself, it's it's like the fact that we still have like 600 cases a day uh, where I am. And so it's like, obviously, it's not ending anytime soon. And, and so to be realistic, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm sure shelter in place should, you know, definitely going to continue. Should I continue ideally for, for much longer than what we anticipated. Got it. Well, thank you guys for giving us that color. Um, I really think that it's going to go a while as well. You know, as, as someone who's running a business, we're thinking it's going to go on next year. We're actually trying to be really careful 
and being conservative about our, our prognosis, right? And what, how we're planning for 2021, because it really does seem like it's gonna keep continuing for a bit. Um, so indeed, it didn't quite really um, make a change, I think, but maybe validated okay. some of our concerns. Um, so actually, many of you also feel the same way um, in terms of the healthcare system. You do feel that the US uh, healthcare system is still more on the strain of things versus Singapore in terms of being able to deal with upsurge of potential cases. And then in terms of the pace of opening, um, this week, at least this, this group of us here on this call think that it's going to be, uh, that it's a little bit faster uh, than, than it ought to be. So I guess that sentiment suggests that we are a little bit more concerned than we were um, in the previous week. Um, in terms of those of us here in this particular call, uh, many of us are actually planning to stay in the US for now. So over 60% of the folks on the call here are reflecting that we want to stay in the US. And there are about 20%, same as the previous week, of those who would like to go back to Singapore but haven't done so at, the po at this point of time. So that's really interesting as well. Um, for us in particular, because most people are planning to stay in the US at this point, I'm guessing maybe because of self-selection and the topics that we have this evening, we have a food topic which tends to attract, bring on a lot of Singaporeans who are, you know, like wanting to, to make sure we can cook really well because we're digging in here in the trenches and we need to, you know, care for ourselves and figure out how to cook. Um, so I'm really excited then to uh, welcome our host for this evening, um, our chef extraordinaire, Chef M. Um, who is what, otherwise known as my celebrity chef because actually she's gone on guys grocery games and won You know, it's like how rare do you see a Singaporean and American? Uh, TV show and then it's a cooking show and she wins it. That's kind of really cool Kind of shows that Singapore flavors are you know, like Dominating in fact, I'm hearing about other amazing Singapore chefs who you know There's another one who's running the top Michelin restaurant now as well um, you know, around the world. So it's super exciting as well. Oops, sorry. Someone's saying, Eugene saying, uh, spoiler, I haven't finished watching it. Well, you know what? She's actually um, been in a couple of these different grocery game shows. So not too much of a spoiler because it feels like it's a continuing um, episode. But in the meantime, she's actually also created a series of her own just for us, actually. So we're very, very honored to have her um, own special um, show for us. And I'm gonna try to, to, uh, to share that with you, something that she created for us. So I'm just going to do some nifty, nifty kind of work here on screen sharing and hope that it works. Mark, of course, is our resident Apple expert and I am just a recent convert. So, uh, without further ado, here is M's special from uh, Dabao, Singapore. Hi everyone, I'm currently at the top of MBS at C'est La Vie doing an event with a friend of mine called Gwen. So Gwen, how are you today? Tell us more about yourself. Um, I opened a hawker business, which is a one, which name is a one prawn noodle, uh, with my partner uh, Kun. So we started this in 2019 when uh, I just left the restaurant scene and wanted to open something that which I think that is my childhood food and death row meal as well. So if there's a uh, one thing that I feel that is lacking in the hawker scene for prawn noodles, it will be this style of prawn noodles. I do the prawn noodles slightly differently. I do it Penang way. The method of grinding the shell, uh, boiling the prawn stock for long hours, as well as the pork bone broth for long hours, is the special characteristic of the of this prawn noodle. So through COVID, right, uh, we we got engaged with more drivers because of this thing called uh, Hawker United and Driver United, which was created on Facebook to help uh, Singapore local businesses. And through that, uh, we keep in touch with our drivers and till now they are still helping us send deliveries, which uh, we continue to provide convenience to our customers. Uh. Yeah. 
Uh, we we before this uh, during COVID we didn't take a rest at all because things uh, times were very unsure. Uh, right now it's once every two weeks, and uh, I work from seven a.m. in the morning. I reach the uh, I wake up at six, reach the store at seven, seven all the way to eight or ten, uh, eight or nine la. Yeah, but my partner will come slightly later, but then he will do a closing. Uh, definitely the soup, but we are still sourcing out uh, ways to make it easier for us to produce, such that we do not need to stop service because uh, it's stopping the revenue as well. Right? Mm. That was pretty awesome, Chef M. Tell us a little bit more about the event. Yeah, the kind of dishes we saw. Okay, so uh, the Sky High Hawker event was organized by I think a bunch of like food people uh, out there, like media food people. <laughs> uh, and then, um, so my friend Gwen, whom I met in the Culinary Institute of America in Singapore, she's actually my junior. Uh, she opened up her own hawker center, uh, her own hawker stall, which I thought was like, you're mad, like, you know what I mean? You're crazy if you want to do a hawker stall. Um, because that's also my dream, but I know how hard it is. So uh, basically what I wanted to do for this video was to educate people on how tough um, being a hawker is, especially because uh, everything, all the prices are inflating. You can't pay the same price anymore. And um, I just find that it's very... Uh, inspiring that she's still doing this she works every day and every day for two weeks and it takes like a day break that kind of thing so i, I i'm like <laughs> i think i have it very easy if i'm running tapas singapore from here you know what i mean mm -hmm. but yeah that event was was pretty interesting this, uh, because i saw a lot of uh, hawkers who were very innovative with their food uh, one guy uh, hassan he was the guy who was like serving the the nasi biryani across from us uh, he actually was torching his already pre-cooked lamb, right? So you could taste like, it kind of tasted like, like wok hay kind of flavor, but you know, like wok hay lamb in biryani is pretty interesting. And he also smoked his rice with ghee, you know? That's just so impressive to see how people have been like improving or like put, or putting their little modern twists to hawker foods. Um, uh, and seeing all that happen, it, it, in, in, in MBS, or not MBS, in Say La Vie was just very inspiring. It just makes me feel like, you know, like I just got to keep pushing to do what I want to do um, as much as I'm just doing Singaporean food in, in San Francisco. But that was, it was very nice to see that camaraderie. Everybody was helping each other. Um, but yeah, so that was the event. <laughs> it's still going on today, but I'm here presenting to you guys <laughs> instead. Very cool. Hey, what's yeah. the economics like to run a Fokker store? Um, so what, what's according, the according to Gwen, right? So she's told me like there's some unfairness in the industry because if you started your business like the 30 years ago, your rent's still going to be $300, $400. Um, but then in order to break into it as a young, new budding entrepreneur, uh, you have to bid for the stalls and her, her rental is $1,600 so $1, a month, wow. right? So it's, it's, a, it's a drastic increase from, you know, $400 to $1,600. So the other hawkers, uh, they can sell the food for very, very cheap, whereas she cannot. But, where, but when you're in a place where everyone's older and has owned their stores for a longer period of time, um, it makes it a little tricky. La, like, you know, like, why would you want to spend $6 on prawn mee when, like, the other store, the other somewhere behind was, like, you know, three fifty for prawn mee. So she, she was giving me the huge breakdown and she's had, she has to have staff to help her and pay CPF and all that stuff. So... Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why she's actually working like 12, 13 hours a day, every day for two weeks, you know, to break even. Got because, it. Got you know, it. Especially during COVID times, it's, it's really uh, difficult to predict your traffic flow. 
uh, and she that's why she's also transitioned to uh, online sales. Um, yeah. Got it. Because she was talking about relationship with drivers. It sounds like she's connected with uh, some drivers. Is it? Uh, is it like a yes. DoorDash thing? Yes. No, here's the thing. So I'm, I'm not sure if uh, most of you know. So whenever you buy stuff from like Grab, no, uh, Grab, Grab Singapore, uh, Uber or DoorDash, right? Uh, they take a 50 to 30% of the commission. So your revenue is like, the food businesses have very, very low margin of it already. And uh, on top of that, these businesses are going to take 15% to 30% of your cut. So with that 30% already out the door, the moment you sell it, uh, it leaves for very little room for any profit at all. And that's saying if nothing goes wrong that day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if like you manage to sell everything for the day, okay, you make a profit, you're fine. But um, in order for a food business to stay active on these uh, delivery platforms, they would have to mark up their food. So the, uh, so the best option in order for you to support the business would be to di- buy directly from the source. So the restaurant, usually they would have their own delivery people they can lie us with, which is what Gwen was doing. Uh, so she doesn't really engage in uh, those apps, but she has her own like like uncle who like delivers to <laughs> to, to different places and stuff for a a very small fee. Yeah, got it. Wow, fascinating. I mean, if you look at if it's fifteen, if it's sixteen thousand dollars, sixteen hundred dollars a month, it looks like she's gonna make fifty three dollars a day at least. If assuming it's thirty days of continuous business, um, and of course you know with the kind of it's super- just right. That's just rent, right? It's not the ingredients. That's, that's right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, tough market. Um, and she, but she looks as though she does have an interesting thing. What's intriguing though is that she didn't. We don't have her recipe, Emily. So we, I think at this point, Chef M, the the thing that we you know we're begging for right now is figuring out you know how to do this uh, prawn noodle thing. So I think we need you to do a little bit more espionage, um, and and get that recipe for we us. Have a secret but i'm keeping it <laughs> really <laughs> from us how could you we're only recording yeah. this for the world um too much but... work just fine for me when i come back <laughs> all right oh please yes we, we need to get you over here in fact as you know everybody right. from the u.s all over the u.s we're all wanting you to come over now so um perfect let's uh let's get started on your segment thank you very much for showing us that Mar- marina bay sends um Hawker events, Sky High Hawker events, super exciting that uh, they have events like that too. And you are our version of that, where you're actually showing us, you know, special Hawker highlights. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background, uh, Chef M, for those of us who haven't um, met you before. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Emily. Um, I actually have a background in marketing and did mass communications uh, for my diploma in Yan. Um, but then I felt like uh, a giant vacant hole in my heart and discovered that I actually have a true passion for cooking. Uh, so I enrolled in the Culinary Institute of America and got my degree off there. And then based off, uh, because I had to do an internship, I did it in California and fell in love with uh, what California produce had to offer because I've always... I've always felt like there's something lacking in Singapore. You know, like when you eat Singaporean fruits, right? It's like, even the flavor, you know, it's like very sour, very watery kind of thing. Like, have you ever had like really tasteless watermelons? Mm. It's not like that in California. (laughs) You can get the stuff from like, you know, like further down south. So uh, I think that was what really made me want to stay and continue working uh, in in California. So I moved to SF and did like a bunch of fine dining foods. Uh, I such a Michelin star places. I have a background in Michelin star foods. Uh, but right now, I'm running Tabao Singapore from uh, Singapore because I had I lost my job during COVID. And then I started the Tabao Singapore business. Uh, it's doing okay, uh, except for the fact that I can't go back now because my visa got denied. Uh, so I'm still going to try and run Tabao Singapore from here with my team of two and other helpers. Um, but Tabao Singapore mainly focuses on Singaporean food that provides you a sense of comfort, you know, when you when you when especially during these times i feel it's very important um to have something that you can feel like comforted by because uh, that's how i felt when i lost my job and the whole world was going like crazy um so yeah we deliver um it's mostly an o- online pre-order business and uh that aside i've also been on tv a few times mm-hmm. uh, i keep forgetting that for some reason um but i participated in guys grocery games and i represented and did uh, singaporean food 
for the large majority of the times I was on the show um, and won a couple of uh, games. Um, yeah, and here I am about to present to you my segment. <laughs> Super. Well, thank you. Um, it's uh, certainly been fun. Uh, not just experiencing your video segments, but also your laksa, which is just like super spot on. I truly encourage anyone who hasn't tried M's laksa to, to do it. It's like better than laksa eaten in Singapore. It's crazy. I'm trying to find a way to bribe her to cook for my parents in Singapore. Um, I don't know if I've been too subtle, but I think I need to be a little bit more uh, obvious about asking her to cook for my parents in Singapore so they can taste this awesome laksa of hers. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's... But one element of the laksa that she has been cooking and one of the elements of, of what I've learned about M is that she actually had a really strong foundation from our first video, we, we learned that in spices. So it is a rare treat for us to hear from her a little bit more about how to make basic sambal nasi lemak. And Shavan, would you like to take us through this, please? Yeah, so I'm just gonna direct my, my laptop to the stuff I've set up here already. Got a little studio for you guys to see. So if you look at the PowerPoint slide, right, uh, essentially those are the very, very basic ingredients that you need for the sambal nasi lemak. What makes the sambal nasi lemak is um, anchovies. Uh, if, you, if you omit this, it's just regular sambal. Uh. Um, but uh, these are the things that you need. So if you uh, look at the PowerPoint slide, there's like cloves, garlic cloves. Um, I already cut up the shallots. Fresh chilies. If you don't have the Singaporean chili, you obviously you can use Fresno or just red jalapenos. Dried chilies. Uh, make sure to cut them out and try to deseed them as much as possible if you're not into spice. And a bunch of red onions that I've cut up also for to provide texture for when you're doing uh, when you're frying the, the the sambal. So I'm just gonna proceed with blending the stuff right now. Um, and these are the fifteen dried chilies that I've deseeded and soaked for approximately two hours with like hot water and I've changed the water like two three times already because um, the, the liquid gets really spicy as well and I'm trying to warm them up and soften them. Feel free to ask me any questions too because this is live cooking there's going to be like a few pauses here and there. Then I'm going to take out some of the water Just so that I have a vessel a volume for it to blend and it's okay if it's a bit too loose because essentially you're gonna you know fry it off anyway so I'm gonna do it like batch by batch because I have like a very ghetto blender right now I don't have my equipment like I do in SF so I have a stick blender and I'm gonna pray it works Used to be working just okay. It's working. Oh my gosh, I was so afraid. Um, and then fresh chilies, they also cut up to be slightly small, so it fits into this little cup that I'm blending it in. And then as you can see with the more stuff, it gets a little bit thicker. And that's fine. So long as you get it blended up to the consistency that you like. Okay, awesome. So now I have this, this cup of very chili smelling, garlic smelling paste. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is to heat up my pan. Hold on one sec. So there's a few processes, a few steps to do this, right? You have to get a whole bunch of oil. If you are not an oil fan, use less oil. Uh, and I'm gonna have to fry the anchovies first to get it crispy. And ideally, you should fry it uh, when it's dried. La. I've already rinsed and uh, rinsed off all the dirt from this and let it dry for like a few hours. 
um, just wait for the pen to hear. Um, M. Yeah. I got a question. What is the closest type of typical fresh chili we can get in Singapore that is that well, but you have in Singapore that you can find in SF? So like, what I've been using for yeah, what I've been using for my rumpa is uh, Fresno chilies, but they're Fresno expensive. Yeah, it's like six ninety nine a pound. You know, my gosh. <laughs> I guess it depends on which market you have to go to, uh. but yeah. Fresnos are close or jal red jalapenos. So jalapenos are usually green. It's just green because um, it's uh, just not ripened enough. So just buy the red ones if you can find them in the market. But otherwise, I think in order to get like red jalapenos, you have to go to a farmer. Okay, so right now I'm frying the ikan bilis. I got like the mid-tier quality one. So there's very different tiers of uh, it can be this apparently. Can you comment how powerful the stove or the heat needs to be? Uh, medium will be good. So long as you can see this and it's not smoking. What you're trying to do is just get it to slightly brown so it retains its crispness when you fold it, it mix it in with your sambal later. Yeah, so one of the reasons why like I picked sambal as well as soon as I teach today is because I feel like chili sauce or sambal is like, you know, quintessential to any Singaporean dish there. You know what I mean? You go to any Malay food store, there's some kind of chili. You go to any Chinese food store, there's any kind of chili. Indian place also, any kind of chili. So if you can make this at home, I think you'll be a very happy camper. Okay, so right now I'm going to stop the the cooking process because it's going to continue turning brown. Yeah, I, I know it's a perennial question. So this is like vegetable oil, but not olive oil? It's vegetable oil. Um, the reason why I don't use olive oil is because olive oil has a very low smoking temp. Um, and it's not good for frying foods or sauteing foods for extended period of times. Um, because with low smoking points, right, it's actually more harmful for, for your body when you ingest the foods. Yeah, so like in, in, in Singapore, we don't really use olive oil. La. Uh, we use like peanut oil, coconut oil, soybean oil, just because it's, um, they can withstand the heat of the food that we're preparing. So right now I'm adding the, the red onions. I have a question for you too. How is sambal for nasi lamak similar or different from sambal to mess? The regular sambal. This ikan bilis is, is key to what makes that sambal flavors that that's nasi lemak that you have. Uh, there's sambal that you have in nasi lemak, the, that particular flavor. Uh, the saltiness from and the anchovy flavors really impart like a lot of a lot of like it, it's a very it's a very key flavor in in the sambal. Right? But typically you do sambal like with the uh, heavy, right, which is dried sh shrimp. Okay, I'm just gonna take this a little further. I know it looks very oily, guys, but that's just how it is. Okay, I'm gonna stop it too. I'm just basically sweating it. And then with this residual oil, I'm going to fry my rumpa. What's a rumpa? Rumpa is just spice paste. It's How long would this paste keep? In the, if I put um, it? the cooked version, um, according to my studies, it will keep for like a week or two if so long as you don't use like a dirty spoon that kind of thing and it, and it's immersed in oil but if you want to keep it long term right put it in the freezer and ideally right sambal if you make it yourself right it's always going to taste better the next day okay right now I don't, you can't smell it but i'm just going to tell you 
the chili, the capsaicin is really escaping the pan right now and it's very spicy smelling. So I think that's one of the reasons why people don't also make their own sambal at home. Because there's a very sharp spice that's coming off of this. So I'm gonna jack up the heat so you don't stare at me frying for too long. Um, you just want it to be slightly brown and then after that you can add in the sugar. This one which is the um, Assam, uh, what's it called? Tamarind paste. Um, in nasi lemak, in most of the sambals actually, you can taste sweetness, umami from either anchovies or the heavy which is the shrimp and um, acidity from tamarind. And if you don't find tamarind in the US, right, uh, I would say like lime juice kind of helps if you add like a little bit towards the end. Plus cooked uh, citric acid, right, cooked lime juice or lemon juice is never, never tasty. There's always like a slight bitterness that comes off of it. So you can see that the chili is already darkening. And then I'm going to add my sugars. The sugar will caramelize a little bit and brown as I continue cooking it. So I'm not going to add any salt to this uh, for myself because um, my anchovies are, this particular anchovies that I'm using are kind of salty. I didn't soak them for too long. Put this in here. I'm going to have to cook this for another like three to five minutes. Add this to. So the more I cook it, the red onions that you see are kind of still holding its structure. It will fully disintegrate and soften and the color of the entire paste will darken. It's going to take a few more minutes at least for that to happen. I'm going to add some water from the chili because we're getting a little dry. Oh my god. Yeah, you can't smell it, but it's like very sharp chili smell coming off the pan. <laughs> nice. It's amazing how the visual cues are sort of triggering my taste buds. I can feel, I can almost taste the sambal as well. Sorry, what do you say? I was just saying, I think it's the yaokui side of me, but I can taste it, whatever you're cooking here. <laughs> What's also amazing <laughs> is that you're doing this in pretty much 10 minutes, which is very encouraging for those of us who think that this is super hard to make. You're really well, breaking that, it down for us. That's why I'm giving you guys a very basic sambal, you know? Typically, this would take a lot longer just to get like more of the flavors to the accurate um, profile. Got it. And uh, you know, there's some yeah, online. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Sorry, Emily. It's already softening. It's slowly become like slightly mushy, like how you have outside in the stores. We essentially have a few questions that have come through the chat window and thanks to Janice Go for responding to some of them as well. Uh, we have folks who are trying to understand or learn where you can get tamarind paste. 
um, in SoCal is at Ranch 99. I think in NorCal, Genesco was recommending New Mewa. What about yeah, New Mewa? Yeah. yeah. That, that would be where you'll go as well? Yeah, that's where I usually go in SF. New Mewa has a lot of Southeast Asian. Uh, mm -hmm. mm, okay. This is RTG. So I'm just going to halt the cooking process right now because it's just going to take a lot longer. It's taking a bit um, too long for it to brown. And I don't want to bore you guys with the cooking process. But this is essentially what it looks like right now. Mm -hmm. And then there you can, like, I can taste the anchovies already. Mm. You see? Yep. It will be so good with coconut rice. <laughs> and more ikan bilis. But yeah, that's the end of my sambal nasi lemak. Brilliant. For you. Thank you very much. So no yeah, it, it really looks delicious, Chef M. Um, thank, you. thank you. Great effort there. And I think this is really breaking down for those of you who are curious and felt that was too fast for 10 minutes. We will be uh, creating a little snippet of that in our recordings, which you can find um, on, our, on our YouTube channel as well. Mark will send out the link later, but then we can play it, you know, break it down, you know, uh, in slow motion, right? For those of us who, who need to do this slowly. <laughs> but that's amazing, Chef M. Um, it already tastes great. Sometimes all we need is a little bit of sambal, right, to go with um, what we have here to, to make it feel like home. Great. The other thing you were gonna talk about this evening very, very shortly is on mooncakes. Um, <laughs> Based on the season we are in, tell us a little bit about the different types of mooncakes that you're seeing in Singapore and, and how is it made? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold on, let me move to the living room where it's less hot. <laughs> yeah. Mooncakes, right? Traditionally it's done with like with dough and then there's um uh there's a syrup that you use to glaze over it to give it that distinct uh, yellowish golden brown color. But I think nowadays, right, a lot of people are kind of deviating from that because it just takes too much work. I've had, um, I spoke to actually 1000 Layer Bakery who's based in the East Bay and I kind of asked them how their cooking process is. Uh, it takes two weeks for the syrup for some reason to get to its ideal color. I didn't press why, I really should have, but it seems like a project that you would do in bulk. It's not like, a, oh, I want to make two mooncakes for you, that kind of thing. It's, it's like, I got to make 100 to 300. <laughs> wow. you have to buy the, the bags of lotus paste you know and fill it up and it just takes too much time and effort for it to just be like a one person thing so i'm just just saying if anybody wants to make mooncake for you and makes one mooncake for you you're pretty special just putting it out there okay <laughs> all right good to know when you are ready to make your 300 mooncakes please put me on that list <laughs> one day one day but yeah, so as you can see in that slide, it's a very brief slide of what uh, Mid-Autumn Festival is about. It's basically the 15th day of the 8th month of the lunar, lunar year. And it's in celebration of like the, the, the harvest and uh, people give appreciation to the moon. Uh, and they enjoy this time with their family. I know it's really difficult to do that, especially when you're overseas. I think that's why uh, you guys hosted the, the, their social, uh, social night, you know. Uh, Singaporeans also... I feel like speaking to a Singaporean already feels like more comforting because of the accent and all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so something I just wanted to, to talk about uh, is that there are many, many different kinds of mooncakes now. Uh, if you see in the top left corner, it's a traditional mooncake, right, with like the one salted yolk. And then on the right, somebody got creative and did like rainbow unicorn, uh, like spiral mooncake. And then on the bottom right, there's snow skin mooncake. And on the left, I don't know if you can tell, it's Minions Mooncake. Yeah, so cute. <laughs> what is a mooncake at this point? <laughs> I think I, I, I personally believe that like having, a, having something that's sweet and wrapped around with the skin and then you have that and share it with the purpose of celebrating the Autumn Festival, you can call that thing whatever it is a mooncake. You can literally, I think that like, you can even put like sandwich fill it up, wrap it up, and press it with a shape and call it a mooncake. Because there's no rules, you know. Um, people usually make um, red bean paste, lotus bean, um, and then now people are stuffing it with durian, you know, like 
and still calling it mooncake. So the whole idea of what a mooncake has evolved from what it actually is made of to the purpose of uh, what it serves, which is bringing people together and sharing this like sweet treat. That, by the way, I have a very interesting fact for you. Um, one mooncake is about 1,200 calories. So, <laughs> that equates to two nasty lemaks. <laughs> so, do not eat a whole mooncake. Wow, breakfast. so you just pack a punch. That's something I did when I was younger. And I'm like, why am I getting fat? <laughs> so, does that mean for our emergency, you know, we had an emergency preparedness uh, chat two weeks ago. Yes. Really packing mooncakes as emergency they rations? They keep very well because they're high in sugar, right? And then it also makes you feel a bit happy when you eat mooncakes. So, after an earthquake, eat a mooncake. Don't tell everybody because they're gonna go crazy and like buy mooncakes. Like how did it buy for toilet paper? So <laughs> everybody calm down. <laughs> well, but mooncake the one. But the one that we bought from Kiwa, um, they actually last till December, so they last some time, several months actually. So it could yeah. perhaps be the earthquake food indeed. Yeah, it definitely can. I think if you zip, uh, if you seal it, vacuum seal it you 100% can have it like the next year because yeah, it's just so high in sugar and fats. Mm. That is amazing. I just want to give a shout out to uh, Tommy from Nonia Cafe. He made a uh, durian mooncake. It's right here. It's so precious. Um, I haven't, I, yeah, this is the second time I've had a batch and it's so good, right? I'm saving it for that special moment today. The other one, which you have to imagine, is actually the taro mooncake. It's over. It's gone. It did not survive the first hour. <laughs> so, but yeah, we have uh, durian mooncakes out here, kind of-ish. I'm guessing it's not the same because we maybe don't have the pure durian. Um, but this is exciting. Thank you. I know Angelia made some mooncakes as well. I was following her on her blog. I think she made some snow skin mooncakes, the ones on the bottom right. Yeah, she showed us actually the picture. Yes, during... yes, yes, I did. I yeah, did. did you do that? You said you did that golden syrup or you didn't do the golden syrup? Oh, I, I, I did uh, make the golden syrup uh, like uh, almost a month ago, four weeks. But just that I procrastinated about making the the, um, the filling. So I just, uh, maybe I decided to make it next year. It can save up to almost a year. So, Wow. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's great. I should get to know you better, Angelia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we can have these forever lasting mooncakes. Now, was mooncake, I'm trying to get my, my little legends all aligned. Is this one the, the, where they put the secret messages in mooncakes? To yes. To the Manchurians? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So how- I is also make the taro mooncake, the spiral mooncake, uh, like uh, maybe like, almost uh, three weeks ago, but they're all gone. Got it, got it. Have you guys ever made mooncakes with messages in them? Because how is it that the Westerners have the fortune cookie in the US, but then we don't have mooncake messages, you know, with our fortunes in it? I think you're onto something. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> <I might> do <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, at that time, they don't have text messages or Facebook messages ah. or WhatsApp, you know, at, during those times, they have to put secret message in the, um, in the mooncakes to, to pass the uh, message across, uh, uh, you know, during the Fan Qing Fu Ming period time. Got it. So now we have, maybe we can do a QR code inside so you can actually change the message on the fly as well from the servers, <laughs> right? So just put a message in there. You can last forever in the year. You know, you can open it up and, you know, if, if you open it during Valentine's Day, you get a Valentine's message. If you open Jasmine, it, instead of stamping the traditional Chinese characters on the mooncake, why don't you just stamp a QR code? That's right. We should stamp a QR code. That is exactly what we should do. All right, ladies, you got your business ideas now. <laughs> and I think Emily's going to stamp like Dabao, you know, Instagram link or something. That's right. Yeah. She is. <laughs> And, and guys, thank you so much for this wonderful segment. Um, Chef M and Angelia for sharing your tips. I know Kay Lim here is looking at nasi lemak mooncakes. You know, everyone's got these cool ideas. He's got the whole thing there, you know, rice, no skin, fried chicken, anchovies. He's got the whole recipe um, and the whole menu laid out, Chef M. So please take a look at Kay Lim's idea. You know, we've 
got a lot of folks who are enthusiastic about your first batch of 300 mooncakes. So do keep us posted. Um, in the meantime, we will work on messages. But for today, we do have some bittersweet messages from uh, for CG Daryl Lau as we say bye to him. So guys, thank you again, ladies, for the mooncake segment. We are going to pivot into um, the farewell segment we have for for Daryl Lau. Thank you again, Chef uh, Chef M, for the for all that wonderful advice. I am excited to try things out. Sure, right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, everyone, we have come to a moment which we um, don't want to come to because we've had three wonderful years with uh, CG Daryl Lau, and he's been along our journey with us for you know many many different events, from Chinese New Year events to community sports days, from Christmas parties to COVID nineteen support. Notice it's all C's, you know, without even much effort. It all kind of like came together. Um, but it's not been definitely a C-level performance. I think it's been A+, plus. I have to say. If there are any grades to be given for CGs uh, out there, it is definitely A A-plus performance, not just in terms of the work that, uh, the support you've given us from a professional level, but from the relationships you've built with us um, across the board, you know, not just from Singapore Connect, but I know across the community as, as we reached out to the community and asked for photos, we, we just saw such heartwarming Photos come from um, everyone and the outpouring of support and well wishes. Daryl has been amazing. So um, we just want to share some of that with you this evening. Uh, Mark, as I begin, any, any words uh, uh, from, from Singapore Connect to Daryl? Well, well, truly, it has been a wonderful collaboration, uh, starting with, I think, even the Sports Day, uh, also the National Days. Uh, Lunar New Year celebrations. Uh, you've always been so uh, enthusiastic on any uh, event uh, suggestion, or uh, you've also been so opening, open and welcoming. I think to a few of us uh, who've been uh, to to visit you in the residence in, in San Francisco, just just that kind of warmth and openness, just to invite us uh, and talk to us, learn about what our uh, lives are like in the Bay Area and how the, the presence of the CG and, and his team can just connect and make all of us feel closer to home, as well as the help that I think you give to us in the times of need, uh, whether people have personal emergencies or, or situations. Um, I think you've been and your team been always there and we, we just remember all these happy moments with the, whether they're your, your speeches, uh, very lighthearted and casual and, and to the point, uh, or your enthusiasm at the sports day. I think you were out playing soccer. So just, just get, get active, right? You, you were an example of just uh, with your family as well, uh, your kids and your wife, we met all of them they came to the events and I think many of us uh, just really appreciate, uh, this is like a full time 24 seven. I know of course you, you have your time off, but it, it felt like you were always around a, in all our forums. It's clearly many of them were in the evenings. And, and I think that was very reassuring, uh, connecting us back to the Singapore government and letting people know what resources and how to make use of them you know, what resources available how to make use of them so we just want to do a little farewell uh memento and we continue to invite everybody to fill in our uh, i think forms with your messages so we'd be very happy to compile them and, and, and give you something uh, in this day and age obviously no physical gatherings so so it's, it's our virtual and digital <laughs> Uh, technologically enhanced send off, uh, but we invite everyone to continue to share your messages of of any sort, as well as photos that that you want to just give CG this beautiful uh, memento of this wonderful three years uh, that he has shared with all of us in the Bay Area and of course uh, everyone else in California that uh, has been has been uh, you know, happy to, to be part of. Thank you, Mark. 
Thank you, Mark. And we also have a, a couple of words from uh, some of your colleagues. Daryl, I just want to make sure you're here. Are you here with us? I don't see your, your photo and I want to make sure you don't miss this moment when, uh, when we play this video. Hey, Jasmine, I'm, I'm around here. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I know you're pretty shy, but I'm going to play this anyway. Um, this is from some of your colleagues um, who have worked with us here as well. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Daryl. Thank you so much for your support and guidance over the years. We will miss you. Take care and stay safe. We'll see you in Singapore. There we go. They're all looking forward to see you back home. And um, I think you know some of the faces here are, are both current and former colleagues. Uh, David, anything to add to these words? Um, hello, Daryl. <laughs> See you in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for all your um, support over the years. I, I think, the, as you can see, the community really, really appreciated everything that you've done for them. And I'm just happy to have worked together with you. So catch up with you back in Singapore when everything's a lot uh, more sane. Yes. So lots of words here, and I know we're going to take our time to read them, but just to highlight, you know, everyone's just not talking about the impact you've made uh, in terms of the professional front, in terms of being here for us, right? Um, during this COVID-19 period, being on every one of these COVID-19 calls with us, you know, basically letting us know that Singapore is here for us, you're here for us, and you didn't go back during the, you know, the, the high point of the crisis to be able to let us know what's happening in Singapore, you know, uh, what, uh, what the government can do for us here if we need any help to calm and allay our concerns. And also, you know, I think now as you head back, I know that uh, you, you know, you leave so many awesome friendships behind because that's what everyone's been talking about, you know. And it's not just you, Daryl, it's actually your family. I mean, a lot of us, you know, had the opportunity and privilege to hang out with Eileen as well. And she's been amazing. I don't know if she's near with you right now, but certainly if you look at uh, some of these different photos, she's, she's featured in many of them. <laughs> as well and uh, we're very grateful for the parties uh, the ladies parties that she has organized that have also inevitably been gate crashed by men because they're so popular and the food's been so good as well um so i think that it's been amazing to to see this journey uh, that we've had over the the past few years to know that it's not just the professional connections but the personal connections that you have forged just because I know, you know, we just feel it from the heart, right? The, the work that uh, you've done. And I think that I speak for many here that those of us who enjoy our work very much probably are not working. So Daryl, I'm guessing you haven't been working actually these past three years because it feels like you've definitely had a good time with us. But let us give you a moment to perhaps share your thoughts about your time here with us. Um, yeah, thanks, Jasmine. Uh, and thank you, everyone. I think, um, you know, as you have said, uh, this is a bittersweet moment, uh, given the fact that uh, as a foreign service officer, we are, in a sense, uh, nomads for life. So, you know, taking up assignments, leave, going to new places and then having to leave is always uh, an aspect of our life and something which we have to manage. Of course, uh, that doesn't mean that it is easy when we leave, um, especially when you make good friends and you develop um, strong relationships and friendships with um, fellow Singaporeans and of course your host uh, country folks as well. So um, it has been an absolute privilege for my family and I to have been welcomed by the community in so many ways in many events that we've been invited to attend. And, um, you know, um, all this would not have been possible if uh, it was not for your warmth and hospitality of, uh, you know, the many Singaporeans who we met along our journey here in California. Um, you know, a shout out, of course, to uh, SyncConnect um, in how you have, uh, you know, brought our community together. Um, likewise, I think for, for instance, uh, Nick, from uh, San Diego, you know, with Singma Club, you know, 
we've always had uh, the privilege and and and, and the honor of, of of gatherings with our Singapore communities, both near and far, and all this has made, been made possible through through the uh, I think the dedication and commitment of the various Singapore clubs. Uh, which have supported the consulate in the discharge of our responsibilities. So um, we live with a um, little tinge of sadness, of course, but I think uh, like uh, what all of you have mentioned, what is great about all this is that, you know, with uh, modern technology and all that, it is so easy to stay in touch and let's keep in touch. And also I would, uh, I'm sure this will happen, you know, that you will provide the same support that you will provide to my successor, who is uh, Mr. William Chick, as you provided to my family and I, you will discover that he and his wife um, were, is just an, another very, uh, you know, a, a very, an, an, a very nice set of human beings um, who will, I think, uh, work very well with everyone here in, in California and, and, and elsewhere. So on this um, short note, let me again express uh, my appreciation to all of you, you know, for having been an uh, important part of our life in 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 during my assignment in 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 in, in the US, and this is certainly not goodbye because uh, if what my daughter tells me is correct, she'll be on track to hopefully graduate in two years' time, and I'll certainly return to California, and hopefully by then, you know, things will certainly be much settled, and we'll have a chance to meet up again when when I return to California in 2020. Crew, so take care and. Uh, you know, keep, let's keep in touch. Yep. That's awesome. Hi. Thank you, Daryl. Hi, Daryl. Just want to say thank you very much and all the best to you. And you can come here anytime in San Diego. You, our doors are open for you. Thanks, Nick. Good to have you here. <laughs> all right. right. All the like best to you be... and Yiling. Thank you. I feel he might be visiting you before he visits us the next time around. Okay, is, sure. Uh, you're, you're welcome. UCLA. You guys are welcome anytime. That's great. Does anybody else want to say a word in person to Daryl? Hi, I, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can, June. Thank you. Hey, hey, June. I, hey first of all, um, I want to thank um, Christine, who actually had put all the pictures into into this nice presentation format. Um, I want to say a big thank you to uh, um, Daryl and uh, Elaine, who have been very, very friendly, you know, and uh, um, supportive to our Singaporean communities, um, be it, you know, Chinese New Year celebration or the National Day celebration. It was a lot of fun. And, and then you always have your family together with us to celebrate. So we feel that we're very close to you. So we're definitely mm -hmm. going to miss you a lot. So best of luck um, when you go back to Singapore and let's keep in touch. Thank you, June. Um, Pamela, do you have something to say as well? You have to unmute yourself. We, you're right now still muted. I see Sam behind you and you both are still muted. I would say one of the skills I really need to pick up is lip reading. I haven't done it yet though. <laughs> but I, I kind of feel you're saying something. All right, Pam, we're almost there. Okay. Are we, are we there? Yes, we Hi, are. Hi, Carol. This is Pam Ku and Sam Ku. We want to wish you all the best. It's been such a wonderful pleasure to know you, to meet you at all the Singapore events, and also to meet you at the opening of Ramin Te. Thank you for being so much a part of our Singapore community here. You are definitely a People's Consul General. Hey, Daryl. This is Sam. Um, thanks again for your company and contribution to this community here in uh, the Bay Area. Uh, you are the only CG that uh, I know of who has opened up uh, his house to uh, the people over here. So that's very much appreciated. I enjoyed it a lot. Enjoyed meeting your family. Wish you and all of them the best in the future. Have a safe trip back home and our best to you and family again. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Sam. Indeed, it's really awesome. Yiling's Popia is oh, amazing. It's like Thank a you. trademark thing. And, and the satay. And the satay. Mm. <laughs> 
so many dishes. What are we going to do? I hope William can cook as well. No, I'm kidding. I <laughs> thank you. <laughs> for, for, for that. Set some high expectations for the successor, William. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Daryl, can you kind of introduce us uh, to your family? I mean, those of us here who may not know the, the, your entire family, we know of you, of course, Ealing, and of course you have a daughter and a son. Um, at this point, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your family? Sure, I'll do that, uh, Jasmine. Yeah, that. So, um, you know, we have a family of four, uh, Yiling, you've met. Um, our daughter is uh, currently, a f uh, I think she should be in a second year in UCLA. I say it should be because, uh, you know, given the COVID situation, uh, I think uh, she studied through summer courses. So, uh, I don't know whether she's first or second year right now. So that's second, second. okay. Uh, our son is in, uh, I think, uh, his, on, his 11th grade. So he's got two more years of high school before entering college. But before that, I think uh, he would have to serve uh, national service in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So our returning home right now is actually quite timely in the sense that, you know, uh, both our kids have actually spent most of their time uh, living abroad and I think it's important for our son to be back home um, you know and to at least have a better understanding of his own country before entering NS. So um, we've all had a wonderful more than three years here you know enjoying um, California. We made excellent friends. Uh, we will certainly treasure the friendships that we've traveled um, and uh, we shall miss man, all of our friends here but you know with technology it is so easy to keep in touch. So let's do that. Yep. Yep. We will certainly do that. After all, this is Silicon Valley. Daryl, if there is a memory that is that was the you know sort of the the one memory of us in the U.S. that kind of sticks to you that you'll tell of uh, the next place you go to, what would it be? Well, I think uh, you put me on the spot. I think there are just so too, there have been so many events that have kind of like created an impact. Uh, for one, I think, uh, you know, our National Day gatherings, I think, which have always, you know, our community have always enjoyed. But I think beyond that, I think the small gatherings at our homes have also been very memorable. We are able to come together in a more relaxed environment. And then, you know, we, you see the more, we see the more unofficial side of things, you know, in, and, and we identify each other as human beings, and which is, I think, uh, the, the the basic glue that ties all of us together. I think that that's that 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 will always kind of like remain our memory. Yes, that's awesome. I think I would say you're the you know for me one of the memories is you singing in our national day song. We all came together to create that song, and you and Eling were just like you know super game you know to do it. Um, and you did, and you both did your best to just really show you know, how kind of you are. That's mean, uh, Yiling is laughing uncontrollably uh, because you have certainly seen the level of our singing proficiency. That's why she's laughing uncontrollably. You didn't say bye to him. But we try, you know. He's very brave. Yes, that's what we love about you guys. You're just super authentic people, you know, and you're just out there for us and, you know, you put your best out there for us, you know, whatever that best is. <laughs> and that's, that's awesome. We truly appreciate that. Um, so, you know, from the bottom of our hearts as a, as a team here, you know, I think we have many of our committee members here. Mark, of course, our president. We have uh, June, you heard from, Pam, Kristen, um, you know, who's actually been behind the scenes making this wonderful photo montage. With, uh, when, uh, you know, uh, Wilson, who's not able to join us this evening, but sends all his regards and definitely sent a whole like gigabyte worth of pictures for us to pull from. And uh, then of course we have CK, you know, strong and solid CK who's here as well. And he also sent his greetings over too, um, because, you know, I think we've just had such a great experience with you um, over all these years. That is a bittersweet moment. Um, so we look at, look at the different, you know, parties we've had behind the scenes. And, you know, I think even through the, the crisis points, right? Like COVID-19 where, None of us knew what was happening. To know that you were there with us was, was amazing. All right, does, is there anybody else who would like to say something to Daryl? Actually, Jasmine, can I share some pictures? Because I didn't send my picture to you. 
Yes, you want to share them now? Or do you want to yes. share them? Yeah. Okay. Can I, sh I share yeah. it now? I'll try to. I'll try to. Make I think we I want to share some of the very nice picture that we took of uh, <clears throat> uh, Daryl. Okay. So okay. you just have a few more minutes before we end, but for yeah, sure. okay. This is a, a twenty nineteen Chinese New Year okay, you, banquet we, that we, we had. Do you guys? Oh, you don't have? Not okay. yet. Okay. Can you see now? We're excited to see what else he does. We all see his <laughs> stuff with our community. It's kind of cool to yeah. see where he is as well. I'm not seeing them yet. Mark or someone, oh. will you guys see um, Nick's pictures? Can you let oh, me know? It says host disabled participant screen I sharing. Did, I made you a co-host, so you should be able to uh, get there. I think maybe that's because there might be a few. Actually, I have another one. So ah, try to do okay. this and because I have to. Okay, it's on my there different we go. Computer. Okay. Let's try this one. Okay, got it. Okay, so this is, okay, this is when uh, we had a lunch with uh, Daryl and Yiling when he was in San Diego. And this is our 2019 Chinese New Year banquet. <clears throat> and we made Daryl feed the lion with a lettuce and an ang pao. Sorry, hang on here. Um, guys, are you seeing your, his pictures? I don't see it yet. No, oh, we're not no. seeing your pictures. No. I'm sorry, let's see. Uh, I got two, two devices locked in here. I do, and I made them both. I'm now imagining. I did. Okay, let me see if I can try to share. Okay. I there we go. There you go, right? It's starting to come up. It's starting to come up. <laughs> okay. It's saying it's starting. All right, there we go. Got it, okay. Cool. So we made Daryl feed the lion. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so he, had, he was very sport. Oops. Wow. He was really sport about it. Was this in San Diego, you say? In, yes, in San Diego, yes. Uh, how big that was the banquet? It was about okay. 300 people. Wow, it's a big group in San Diego, <laughs> gosh. Yeah, we, we have, have like, uh, past well, 200. we are actually a Singapore Malaysian club, so, so we're kind of combined. Oh, so you combined it together. Yeah. Because like uh, almost 17, 18 years ago, we, I tried to set, start up a Singapore group, but that's only a handful of people. So we kind of combine both. So. June, you're going to make it bigger. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I need welcome to, to come down here. Yeah, yes. <laughs> June's feeling yeah, kind of competitive is, now, I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's Great. pretty much it on the show. Thank you. Nick, and that's Darryl, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye. Thank you. All right. Does anybody else here have photos to share or you would like to um, you know, put in a word on a farewell to Daryl? Kristen, I see your mic on. Or is that? Yes, it's me. Um... Yeah, you sh uh, I'm shy too. So, but I just want to thank you, Daryl and uh, Eileen. It's been uh, a great pleasure to know you guys. Um, it's been about eight years here in the Bay, so I've known about three CG so far. Um, but I think it's um, you. You guys are exceptional uh, in the sense that I, uh, I've always enjoyed seeing you guys uh, in the events, and it's always. Uh, a lot more comfortable talking to the both of you than the past CG for sure. <laughs> uh, so I think I find it's just because I think you guys are really uh, down to earth and really personable and authentic. So uh, I think a lot of people appreciate that about you. So other than missing you guys about the food, um, but hopefully we can continue to keep in touch and we'll catch up when we're back in Singapore. Yeah, so okay. thank you very much for your service for the past three years. I take care. We'll see you again. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Does anybody else want to put in a word? CK. I know you send a brief greeting here, but would you like to uh, say something as well? Yeah. Hi, Daryl. Yeah. Hey. Thanks for everything that you have done for us here. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I find you guys are very approachable and very easy to talk to. And that's why we love uh, interacting with you guys. And, and, and for hosting all the party and all, but we find it very 
nice and had, uh, had the opportunity to meet you guys as well as other people. Uh, all the best to your uh, trip back to Singapore and your whatever next posting that you may have go, may go to. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great. So I just want to keep the floor open. Is there anybody else who wants to share something? Um, Carol? Veronica? I saw you raise your hand, I thought, like physically raise your hand, so. Well, I was going to, but you have very sharp eyes and I was thinking, should I, should I not? And of course, right, Jess, mind reader. <laughs> There's actually been such a great host. <laughs> um, I, I do want to thank um, Daryl and um, his team. Um, it's especially being, you know, taking care of us times during COVID. I think uh, you know, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of pressures, and you've been able to give such grace, calmness, and you're very kind and, you know, always so sweet to all of us. So thank you. Um, we are very fortunate to have you. Perfect. Indeed, I think there's one thing that's happening. Thank you, Veronica. I think there's one thing that's very clear. Daryl, if we see you on the street unannounced, we're going to be very upset. In other words, you have to let us know if you're coming back into the town. And all of California now is looking out for you, even in Texas, Arizona, Boston, and a couple other places. So you're a marked man. If you or Ealing would show up in the U.S. without giving us a heads up, we're going to like be really upset. So please let us know if you're ever in town again so we could um, kind of uh, catch up and, and at least go makan someplace um, if makan, if you know the, the world allows us to do that. And we're really glad of course that we have an academic hostage in the form of your, your daughter still in UCLA. So we figured you might at some point visit, um, if not you, maybe Ealing, to, uh, to check in on her from time to time, or at least collect the, the, the degree uh, with her. So if we see any photographs show up without, you know, you telling us, <laughs> we're going to, you know how we are, we're Silicon Valley here, we're stalkers, did you not watch Facebook, uh, the Facebook dilemma? You know, we're, we're there with you. So please let us know if you're back in town. We love you, we miss you already, and we're looking forward to keeping in touch. Yes, Jasmine, we hear you, we know that we are, uh, one, we are marked people, so uh, we'll certainly uh, obey and uh, certainly keep you guys informed when we are back. <laughs> Super. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, I think a very necessary shout out to uh, I think Sync Connect for you know keeping our community going during these tough times. And in fact, I think you know um, you have far oh, surpassed okay. what what uh, you know could have been achieved with live events, for instance, take. Uh, the, our National Day celebrations. It was a big success all through the commitment and hard work of uh, the volunteers in SyncConnect. And, you know, uh, thank you from the bottom of your heart for your service to Singapore community and service to Singapore. Thank you again. Thank you, guys. All right. So with now, I'm just going to do a quick round uh, with David and Mark before we wrap up this evening. David, parting words. Um, nothing further from me. Just wishing Daryl all the best. Yeah, and catch up in Singapore. Super, thank you. I want to thank Diejun for an awesome job this evening. You can see definitely all of uh, many folks from California as well as all over, you know, participating in the Mid-Autumn Festival. So great support um, as well in this farewell event. And Mark, final words? Just wishing uh, Daryl and Ely and all a smooth uh, journey back to Singapore. Uh, keep safe and healthy. Uh, enjoy your SHN. Uh, I, I know we will be <laughs> all missing you very much in the Bay Area, but uh, we will certainly give a very warm welcome to uh, Mr. William, uh, your successor, and just continue, I think, what we're doing to connect uh, the community and, and everyone uh, in MFA as well in these times, which we all have to stay together, united, and, and we'll, we'll get it back. We'll, we'll make it through, and when things become normal, I think we'll be all looking back and thankful uh, again, Daryl, for, for what you've done, especially to, to just con you know, keep us connected and consult at this time. Great. More C's, Jasmine, just looking to see. <laughs> That's right, more C's. All right. And uh, once again, thank you, Daryl. 
uh, it's been wonderful with you through all the different uh, festivals and seasons. And we certainly look forward to seeing you. Now, everyone, thank you, Ross, for joining us this evening. And uh, I know we'll all be keeping in touch. Take care and be safe. Bye for now. Thank you Bye -bye. very much, the host. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you Mark and uh, Jasmine and Christine. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All the best to Dara Yili. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, you again. everyone. Bye, all. Good night. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye, Daryl. Bye, Yiling. Thanks, Jess. Thank you.